Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. I finally have part two of my first time in Japan vlog. If you missed it, I already posted part one where I go to some to Tokyo locations. We did Osaka, we did Kyoto, we did Nara. This was a very jam-packed trip, so head over there if you missed the first part. The first stop in this vlog is Nagoya. We were there for just a day since my friend had tickets to the Ghibli amusement park, but we didn't. So we had miso katsu, which is what Nagoya is apparently known for. It was delicious. It was honestly a pretty chill day. I mostly just did some shopping and I had some really cute K-pop interactions since I had photo cards on me. Ah, kawaii! Bye. I love the TXT. <laughs> me too! <laughs> I was obsessed with this Beard Papa's branding and the cream puff itself was delicious. I just thought the branding of it was so cute. And then after my friend was done with the Ghibli Amusement Park, we all met back up and we hit up this really incredible Studio Ghibli store that was in one of the train stations. So I might have not been able to go to the amusement park, but I at least got to have another taste of Ghibli with this magical themed store. And then we made our way back to Tokyo, which was our final leg of the trip, since Tokyo has so much to offer and there's so much to do. This was one of our accommodations that we stayed at for a few nights. This was technically called a capsule hotel, but it definitely was way more spacious than what I initially pictured uh, as like a typical capsule hotel. So definitely recommend that for, you know, being on a budget. And then this was a 24 hour sushi restaurant that was nearby and I really didn't have very high expectations for it because it was 24 hours and we just sort of went on there on a whim but honestly I was so pleased and this egg sushi was probably one of my favorites I don't know what it is about the the egg one it's just it's delicious and I didn't film them, but the sushi chefs were actually just directly in front of us making our sushi like to order, which was also really, really cool. But before we continue, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Native. If you're unfamiliar, Native is a clean, vegan, and cruelty-free deodorant. They provide up to 72 hours of odor protection, which is especially important in the summertime here in Toronto. And as well, when I was in Japan, we were constantly in large groups and crowds and we would be packed in like really densely populated subways. And if there's something I've learned about Japan is that all of the people are extremely respectful and considerate of others. So the last thing you want to be is super stinky on a crowded subway. I also love that Native is aluminum and paraben free and they have really simple ingredients such as shea butter and coconut oil. And Native has a really great range of scents as well. So I picked up three. The one that I'm currently using is the Sweet Peach and Nectar, which smells amazing. I'm personally very partial to anything peachy or mango-esque, and I feel like this scent is the perfect balance of fruity and sweet and feels very appropriate for the summertime. I also picked up the lilac and white tea, which definitely has a fresh laundry kind of smell, which I really enjoy. And then lastly, I also picked up eucalyptus and mint, which has a really crisp, just like refreshing scent. And then also worth mentioning the texture of the actual product, definitely not sticky. It feels dry when applied, which is perfect for this humid, hot summer right now. And they also offer plastic-free sustainable packaging as well. So if you're interested, I'll have the link in the description and use my code I'm a wonder to get 20% off your first purchase at Native. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time. So stock up and save. Thank you again, Native, for supporting and sponsoring today's video. Then the next day we headed over to Shibuya for lots of shopping. This is the very iconic egg scramble. First, we went to visit the Hachiko 
memorial statue which was so adorable and it was just so wholesome hearing about Hachiko's story and then of course we had to get some footage of me going through the egg scrambles aka Shibuya crossing it's pretty hectic but not nearly as hectic as what I've seen in other videos or um, of like people going through it I think probably because this was like early afternoon in the middle of the week so it just wasn't quite as populated I think as it is during rush hour or maybe on the weekend and then we just did some perusing around I didn't end up getting anything at the Disney store but I just wanted to show you guys because it was so adorable and I was so enamored by the tea sets especially if i was able to you know transport more breakables i definitely would have been more tempted oh dang the whole gang is here our main shopping destination was shibuya parko which had the shonen jump store which you know i am a big anime fan so while i didn't really get anything i still loved seeing all of my faves just out and about the Nintendo store again didn't buy anything but the Mewtwo here was so freaking cool and yeah Japan just knows how to theme and everything is just so aesthetically pleasing so even just window shopping is so fun to do I did end up buying a really cool sheer jacket that I posted in my Japan haul so check that video out if you haven't seen it yet and of course I love all of the various fashion and this Lolita doll style is so adorable but it's a little bit kind of uh, more aggressive than I would go for typically and then I just again cannot buy breakables but love looking at it and as I mentioned earlier I always had some kind of k-pop photo card on me and this day I had Mingyu from Seventeen and at this like hair boutique there was an employee who actually recognized it and then we briefly had an exchange talking about how we're both carrots and it was very very wholesome then after we were done shopping, we made our way over to Mitaka, which is a small city sort of like near or next to Tokyo. And this city was so quaint and quiet and just so beautiful. It really felt like a Ghibli film and it was the perfect place to have the museum at. It was wafting with like bakery good smells and seeing like school kids coming home in their uniforms we unfortunately were not able to film anything inside the museum so I got as much footage as I could outside but yeah it's absolutely incredible the tickets are a little tricky to acquire but absolutely worth it the all the behind the scenes animation stuff there was short films there was a whole setup that was like a recreation of Miyazaki's studio as a big Ghibli fan and as an artist myself it was just so inspiring and beautiful I highly highly recommend checking out this museum if you get the opportunity to and yeah it would come as no surprise that they really thought of every little detail and it's just so aesthetically pleasing and this even was the ticket that I got and it was a film reel from Ponyo and they were all different each of my friends got a different one which is so amazing and as I said this city was just perfect for a Ghibli museum because look at this gorgeous park that we stumbled upon on our way out of the museum I had been hoping for my Oran High School host club kiss kiss fall in love cherry blossom moment since it is cherry blossom season when we went so of course I had to be obnoxious and take a million photos and videos while we were there Then we made our way back to Shibuya and we're doing the Shibuya crossing again, but nighttime edition, a little bit more hectic than during the day. And I got to say it's yeah, again, it's just it's not quite as overwhelming as I think a lot of people make it out to be. But who knows, it could have been the day that we were at there or maybe because I live in Toronto, I'm used to a lot of people in crowds. 
then we happened to stumble across this nine days gallery in one of the shopping towers and it was like such a amazing serendipitous moment again because my friend and I are artists ourselves and in my Japan haul you'll know that I actually ended up buying an art book while I was here and I briefly spoke to the owner and he was like oh are you an artist and I was like yeah I am and like I low-key was hoping that you know we could make some kind of networking thing happen it didn't it's fine but they did have an open sketchbook here and I of course had to do a little doodle in there it's probably long gone by this point but I figured I'd, you know, show you guys just in case you happen to stumble upon it in the future. We also serendipitously came across a black pink pop-up shop. We saw so many people wearing black pink merch and I just assumed, oh, they must be on tour in Japan at the moment. And yeah, I think they were. There was a lot of really, really cute stuff. And then the next day, we headed over to Akihabara for some more shopping. I'm sure many of you are familiar. Akihabara is known to be otaku or nerdy central, essentially. We went to many a many tower of stores that just had plenty of claw machines. I was very excited to see all the 17 merch, like so random to me, but I loved it obviously. And yeah, obviously so many anime figurines to potentially win. And I of course loved seeing all the various anime and characters that I love. And it was quite novel at the beginning, but after a while you go to several of these stores and you're like, I don't think I actually have a good chance of winning anything. And honestly, I wasn't really actually interested in buying any figurines. That's just like not something that I typically collect, even though I do love these anime characters. Except I couldn't resist this particular Jujutsu Kaisen Gachapon. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so, like I said, wasn't really in the need of anime merch, so my friend and I split off and headed over to Sakaido, which was probably one of the top things on my list for this Japan trip because of course, I needed to hit up the very famous art supply store. It's five stories tall. I will admit one of them doesn't really count in my books because it was purely framing. But yeah, I tried so hard not to just completely go feral with all of the things that I bought. But obviously my main goal was the Acrylic Holbein gouache since it's basically half the price. I also really wanted to get some manga screen tones because it's just such a unique item and I don't really see it that much in North America. So of course I had to get some and I'm excited to make a whole video of trying them out for the first time. But yeah, Sakaido is incredible. All of my fellow artists, if you're in Japan, I highly recommend checking out this shop. It is just such a feast for the eyes. And especially if you're interested in Japanese branded products, it's way cheaper to get it here. Then we made our way over to Tokyo Sky Tree. We were initially intending to go up the tower, but we actually ended up missing uh, the window. It ended up closing by the time we were done dinner, but at least I got to see it from afar, I suppose. And honestly, it was worth it because the reason why we weren't able to go up the Sky Tree Tower was because we went to the Kirby Cafe. And let me tell you, another bucket list thing on my to do for Japan was to go to a themed cafe of some sort. And again, those tickets are or reservations. You got to book that stuff in a, a month in advance. But again, totally worth it because the theming in here was 
absolutely incredible. It was so detailed, not only the food, but obviously the restaurant itself was completely decked out in Kirby themed decor. Even the dishware was all branded with Kirby. Like Japan really, really knows how to theme and make things cute and aesthetically pleasing. I was blown away. And another thing that I was impressed by was the food was actually good. I think that with a lot of themed cafes or when things are like overly cutesy or aesthetic, the food's taste is not. As good, but honestly, I was actually really pleased with how everything tasted. We obviously, you know, ordered like a variety of things. I was particularly smitten with the corn soup. I don't know what it is. The corn soup, I will be dreaming about that forever. Steven's drink was very involved. It was like a scientific experiment, which was so ridiculous but adorable. You were actually also able to take the coasters home, which was really cool. The main event, of course, was. The dessert that I ordered, which was the Kirby car, just hold for applause because seriously, I was losing it. Like, look at him! Isn't he just the most magical thing you've ever seen? <laughs> And anytime someone accidentally like jostled the table or anything, he would jiggle, and I was just dying, absolutely obsessed. And then, of course, as you do, we have we head up the gift shop, and in my Japan haul, I showed off that I picked up some Kirby coffee and a little like container for coffee, which is adorable. But the cute theming does not stop there. The next day, we went to Tokyo Disney Sea. So for those of you who don't know, Tokyo Disney is split into two parks, Disneyland and Disney Sea. We decided to go with Disney Sea because we all had been to Disney World and or Disneyland in America, which felt like it would be probably pretty similar in Tokyo Disneyland. So we felt like C was going to be more unique. And yeah, the theming here was definitely nautical and a lot of obviously like underwater and water themed kind of rides and decor. And I thought it was really fun. I've heard through the grapevine just from other people on the internet saying that they found Tokyo Disney really underwhelming, but I was having the best time. Like, look at the inside of this building. Absolutely incredible. There was rides inside. There was all these like beautiful decor, the lighting. And I just, I'm just so smitten by themed parks and Disney knows how to do theming. Japan knows how to do theming. So it just felt like a match made in heaven. And I was really blown away and I was having a great time. Like, look at this gift shop. It's inside a whale. Isn't that incredible? I was obsessed. But yeah, as someone who has only been to Disney World before, it was really cool to see what the theming was like at another Disney park, especially one in Japan, like this Temple of Doom, I think, Indiana Jones ride. I believe that was what it was. But again, the theming is just super cool. And I obviously had to get the alien mochi. This was something that I'd seen on the internet for a while. And I'm so glad I got it. It's actually an ice cream mochi. And it was like Neapolitan. So there was one vanilla, one chocolate, one strawberry. And yeah, it was very windy this day, which was pretty funny when Kyung and I were trying to get some cute photos. But 
we did our best. And something that I was on the fence about was getting some kind of Mickey ear situation because I already have Mickey ears from when I went to Disney World a few years ago. But when you're taking all these photos and you're around the park and you see everyone else with their cute outfits. And honestly, cute outfits sounds like, feels like an understatement with Japan anyway, people were coordinated with each other and they went all out. Everyone just is so put together with the way that they dress themselves and style themselves. I was so impressed. And so even though initially going into this trip, I always thought that Duffy, who is like an exclusive bear or yeah, bear slash mascot of Japan's Disney. I always thought uh, he's just a generic bear. I don't understand the hype. But the more and more that I saw him, the more I was getting like falling into the hype of it all. And so we we decided finally we're like, you know what? We're here. Let's go get us some Duffy and Friends ears. But turns out it's kind of hard to get because you had to like reserve a slot specific to certain stores that carried the Duffy ears. Anyway, they really made us work for it, but we were very determined. Thank you to Scott for, you know, just being patient with us because Kyung and I, we were like, we have to get these Duffy ears. Um, so yeah, we made our way to the specific location that we had like made a reservation on the website or the app or whatever. And yeah, I mean, obviously went on lots of rides along the way. Something that I love about Disney is the varieties of modes of transportation. We didn't get to go on this train, but I kind of wish we did because it's so cute. Like, look at it. Oh. But we finally acquired our Duffy ears. Here is some hilarious evidence of how windy it was, but we did manage to get some cute photos. And then we were off to go on some more rides. If you are familiar with Disney parks, you'll know that Tower of Terror is one of the best. It's probably one of my favorite rides personally. And my friend Kyung had never been on it. So I was really excited to be able to see her reaction to this ride. It has like a haunted tower vibe. It's super, super fun. And it was actually slightly different from the Disney World version. And then another Disney World thing that I've experienced that they had here, which is Toy Story Mania. That Woody is so cursed, but I love him. And yeah, the, the decor obviously was beautiful. And this ride is so cool. So fun. The lineup while very long because the ride itself is really long the way that they set up the lineup section there's so much to look at the disney imagineering is so creative i love how everything is humongous and exaggerated to make you feel like you're a toy and there's so many nostalgic little easter eggs in here it's so fun and the toy story mania game is like a 3d shooting kind of arcade experience. I'm definitely not doing it justice in my description, but yeah, look at this gigantic door. How freaking cool. And yeah, worth the wait. Very long, like very long line, but the, again, so much like cool stuff to look at. Even though I've played this game before, I'm still terrible at it. Here's my score. But yeah, I don't know why people seem to not enjoy this park. I think it is just as magical as any other Disney experience that I've had, aka Disney World. I think maybe people expect it to be more Disney Disney with like the princesses and stuff, but it's this one is marketed as Disney Sea. So I think going into it, I knew it wasn't gonna be in the same vein as like Magic Kingdom in Disney World. Regardless, I think it's a great time and I had a blast. And then sadly, it was our day to catch our flight back home. We popped over to Shin Okubo, which is Koreatown. I unfortunately didn't get a ton of footage, but basically we just sort of shopped around and ate some food. And yeah, I really enjoyed Koreatown. It was so cool. I just, I never would have expected Koreatown to exist in Japan, but it kind of makes sense. And yeah, obviously I was living my K-pop dreams, exploring the, uh, the last leg of our trip here. And yeah, sadly that was, that was the trip. 
back on that 12 hour flight back to Canada. And yeah, that concludes the Japan vlogs. I hope that you enjoyed coming along this journey with me for my very first time in Japan. It has been a very long time coming. I'm so happy that I was finally able to go. Definitely lived up to everything that I would, I hoped it would be. And yeah, I know that vlogs is not necessarily something that everyone wants from my channel. So just so you know, for those of you who do watch it, I make it for you. And I really appreciate everyone who has been like so lovely in the comments about my Japan and vlog content. And yeah, look forward to all of the art supply reviews with the stuff that I got. I'm looking forward to doing all of those. And yeah, with that, that's, uh, that concludes today's video. And I hope that you have an amazing day or evening, wherever you're at. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.